time to talk about the power of Lightroom and how it can resurrect some old JPEG images. So you have some old JPEG images on your machine and you didn't shoot them in raw, instead you got them in JPEG. And you might be looking at it thinking, well, it's not quite as exposed as what you wanted it to be. You think the image could use a little more pop and a little more pizzazz and really uh, make it an awesome image. So, what can you do? Well, we're going to spend a little bit of time here. And I've got some of those older JPEG images where the exposure wasn't quite right. And I want to see just what we can do with Lightroom to bring that image to the forefront and make it pop. Okay, so before we get going on this though, um, I do want to talk briefly about RAW. Now, if you have the opportunity to shoot RAW and you're watching this video, chances are you're watching this video because you have a desire to understand a little more about Lightroom or about how you can dress your images up. And if you're at that point with your photography and you're not shooting RAW, consider shooting it. Because when you get to Lightroom and you want to do some creative things with your images, that's where RAW really comes into play. Now there is a time and a place for JPEGs though. I'm a big believer in that and I just created a video on discussing RAW versus JPEG. So take a look at that and uh, feel free to contribute to that discussion as well. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Here is our older JPEG image. As you can see, um, this is 3.4 seconds at an f-stop of 4.5 with an ISO of 200 and it's wide open at 18 millimeters. I'm gonna try to move pretty quick through this. And if you like this, um, just let me know and I'll do more of these. But this is where I think the real pop comes to any, uh, any image is just um, how creative you can get with it when you get into some post-processing. Again, this is outside of the basic snap and share. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, in Lightroom, I'm gonna work from the top down here um, on the right hand side and with that said you can kind of see the available options to us over here um, and I'm going to start off with cropping so when I look at this this crop is a little off so I'm going to bring this down and stand with the theory of thirds I'm going to keep the bottom two-thirds to the juiciness of this landscape and as we step through this please keep in mind that this is just um, my opinion I know not everybody likes ketchup or not everybody like mustard so you know <laughs> It's going to, uh, it's just going to depend on what you wanted to do with any given image. So I'm just going to kind of take you through my process and we're going to see what we can do to kind of make this image pop. Now, when I look at this, I see a lot of interesting colors and I see some lights kind of bursting over here, which I think are pretty cool. Um, and so let's see what we can do with it. So we went ahead and did our crop and this over here, there's a little, a little light right here, a little line, and we're going to address that here in a minute, but uh, my guess is at 3.4 seconds, there might have been something flying through the sky right there. I don't know, but um, let's go ahead and start off with the basic. And again, we're going to go from the top down. I'm going to start off with the temp. Now, I like a little bit of blues uh, in this particular photo just because um, I can see where it might have some benefit to the overall image. So for me, that looks good right there on my tint. I'm going to go on the green side just because I see a little greens in here. Right? So I don't want to go crazy with it, but I want to make these uh, pop just a little bit. You see some green lights over in here, so I think that looks pretty good. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the exposure. And I want to bring this down a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe a stop and a half uh, about right there, something close to that. I think that looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and jump on the contrast. I always like contrast in my images. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up quite a bit, maybe around 50% or so. Uh, okay, that looks good to me. I kind of like that. We're starting to get this sort of dark vibe. The colors are starting to pop. And we just got started. So I think that's cool. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is we are going to go ahead and jump into the um, highlights. And I'm going to bring the highlights down. Now, I know you kind of look at this going, eh, what's that all about? Well, before we get kind of crazy here, the other thing I want to I do is I want to hold down the Alt key. The Alt key will show me where clippings are. 
Now, there are no clippings here unless I go way over on the right side. But I like to bring my highlights down to kind of bring uh, everything else, like color-wise, out and uh, see what's available in the image. My shadows, I'm going to go ahead and move this up quite a bit. Uh, I don't know, about 100. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll kind of go crazy with it and leave it up in that neck of the woods. I'm going to grab my whites. Again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I don't know where my clippings are, but we're going to hit them at some point. There, you can see clippings coming in. Now, I don't want to clip all that, right? So I want to bring it back to where I, and this is just my opinion, but I want to bring it back to where I really don't have any colors. And you can, you can stretch a little bit if you want. It just depends on the image. For me, I kind of like that right there. And then the blacks. You can kind of do the same thing. Hold down the Alt key and see where your clippings are. Now, I don't want to clip all that. No way, all right? And in fact, I can kind of bring my clippings up a little bit if I, if I want to do that and see how it impacts the image. But in my case, I think I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, uh, maybe in that neck of the woods. And let's go ahead and jump on Clarity. So with Clarity, um, I really do like Clarity. Clarity kind of brings... Um, brings a little bit of pop to that image. It kind of really brings some of the, the detail out. So uh, again, it depends on what you're shooting, but in this case, I'm gonna run with clarity probably around 33% in that neck of the woods. And then vibrance. Um, vibrance, I actually like vibrance over saturation. Uh, this will make your colors pop. Now I don't wanna go crazy with it because that looks, ugh. And you take it the other way and it looks dull. Uh, so for me, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, maybe, I don't know, right about there, maybe around 19-20%. Um, saturation, saturation will really overkill these colors. Now, I might, I'm just going to give a little bit of saturation, maybe 5% in that range. That kind of looks good to me anyway. I'm going to go ahead and let's move down to our tone curve. Now, I don't necessarily touch all of these, but... I will say with the tone curve, um, I actually kind of like the tone curve um, just because it, uh, it, in my opinion anyway, I kind of like what it does with the highlights and the lights and the darks. So I'm going to go ahead and see just what impact we have here. It's relatively subtle, um, but I'm going to go on the plus side here and let's go around 20. Uh, yeah, we can go around 20% or so. Let's try that. That looks good. 22. Okay, so the lights, uh, let's see what we can do with lights. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Let's go around 25, 26%. Um, on the darks, let's see what, ooh, yeah, that really kind of, um, it brings a little punch to our darks, which I kind of like. Uh, let's come down just a little bit on darks. That's minus 7%. I'm kind of liking the way this is looking so far. Shadows, don't really think we need to do a whole lot with shadows. I'm going to reset that back. I um, kind of like the way that looks. Now, we went to hit darks, and I'm seeing this up in here. I'm not really getting the dark I want out of the night, uh, the night sky, if you want to call that a night sky. Uh, and we got our line here. So I'm going to make a quick pit stop after we mess with the tone curves, and we're going to address this up here right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my spot removal tool, and I can use my... Uh, my center wheel on my mouse and I can increase or decrease. I can also use the brackets on the keyboard and do the same. I'm just going to come right over this spot. I'm going to hit it, move off it, and there you go. It's gone. So it's kind of nice, right? Um, the other thing I'm going to do is leverage the gradient tool here. And the reason I want to do this is I want to darken the, um, I want to try to darken this, this night area of the sky. Um, so let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to punch this up a little bit. The, the farther out you bring it, the more feather you get um, to your gradient. So kind of want to just hit up a little bit on there, kind of like that right there. And let's go look at our temps. Um, so I have a temp of 24. Let's see. Actually, temp's not even going to matter to us because we're really just trying to darken this. Um, exposure is going to be what's going to be key here. So this looks like we're set at a stop and a half down. Looks, look what happens when we pull it all the way over. And you can still see some of the detail. Look at that, look at that uh, burst from the light coming out. And this is JPEG. So you can only imagine what RAW would have retained. But 
Um, I don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and bring this down. Uh, I guess it was about a stop and a half, which I kind of like that. Um, let's see what else we have here. So we have our contrast. That won't really matter to us. The highlights, I want to bring those down because um, I'm trying to kind of darken that. Now, let's go ahead and go with that right there. Um, I kind of like the way that looks. Our line's out of there. The sky looks a lot darker, so I think we're in good shape here. Um, let's go ahead and jump off of that. Now, when we get into the colors right here, I don't know that I'm going to do a whole lot with this because um, I kind of like the way a lot of these colors are already set up. But if you did want to modify color, you could definitely come in here. Um, I can leverage the slider up down, so I'm just clicking on this right here. I can go out and find any color I want, say this little green click down on it, I can raise it up, you can see how that just glows, or I can bring it down. And look over there on the right hand side, you can see what it does to the luminance. So I'm, I'm in the luminance right now. Um, I'm going to come back over and just reset that. So there you go. You can do the same thing with hue, saturation, all that good stuff. But I think my colors actually are looking pretty good here, just my opinion. So um, I kind of like the way that's set up right now. I don't think I'm going to touch that. Uh, split toning, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot with that either. Um, and detail. So detail, now detail is kind of interesting and I really like detail on some of my pictures. This doesn't actually look that bad. It looks like it's keying on this right here. Um, and if you want to jump on any other spot, I'm going to click on this little, this little icon right there and I can go out and jump anywhere I want in the photos and you can kind of see what's going on here. So. Uh, I don't know that I really want to key on much detail, maybe on the corner of this building, that kind of thing, or up in here, maybe this building out here, yeah, we'll go with that. So um, sharpening, let's go ahead and just ramp this up. You can kind of see how it's having some impact there already, which I kind of like. Um, I like to bump it up in the 70, 80 range, I kind of like the way that's looking. And then uh, when it comes to radius and detail, the defaults there look fine to me. Masking, what you want to do here is hold down the Alt key and take your mask. And when it's all the way to the left, that sharpening applies to the entire image. But in this case, we don't need that because we, I, I don't want to sharpen the black knight. Um, so what I want to do is bring this to the right. Now, everything you see that is in white is going to uh, benefit from the sharpening. That, that's what the sharpening is being applied to. So you can see the buildings out there. I kind of like that. Um, and I think what's dark is the sky right now. So I'm good with that kind of mask right there. And I'm going to let go and bam. So I think it really kind of helps with that image in my opinion. Um, if you feel like you get some noise, I really don't see any noise happening here. Now you might get noise if your ISO is jacked up, if it's high. If you had noise, you'd come down here to some luminance and you would crank this to the right a bit. Uh, but if you go crazy with it, let me show you. Uh, and actually, it doesn't look too bad, but it softens this image quite a bit. And that's 100%. Um, so I'm going to bring that back and you can kind of see the detail all come back into this image. So I think we're fine with leaving our, our noise reduction down on this. So that's, that's good. Okay, so that's our detail. Let's go ahead and jump into lens correction. Now, lens correction, I always like to come in here, go into profile, and this was uh, taken with a Nikon. It even knows the lens that it was taken with right here. It's the 18 to 200. And take a look at what it does. So I've already enabled it, right? But if I disable, this helps to fix barrel distortion. You can kind of see it right there. So that looks really nice. I like that. Um, you can come over here and remove. Um, you can remove the aberration as well. And I don't know that I see a whole lot going on here, but I'm sure it's buried into the detail somewhere. So I like that. Um, and speaking of detail, if we come back down in here, uh, down here on noise reduction when it comes to color, if you have noise caught up in your color somewhere, then you can use uh, some of this uh, color detail or color noise reduction, and it'll try to pull, pull the noise reduction uh, out of color. So it's kind of cool. I, I don't see much of a benefit happening there, so I'm going to leave that alone, but I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so we did lens correction. Um, this kind of takes us down to the effects. Now the effects, uh, usually I like to put a vignette on my images, 
And in this case though, I mean, there's the positive vignette, which I don't like. I always like to go dark with it, but um, let me see if I kind of like this. Yeah, I mean, actually, it does look kind of nice when you have a little vignette on here, I think. A vignette helps to draw the viewer's eyes towards the center of the image. And so um, you can kind of see the before and then take a look at the after, how it just kind of, it kind of starts to tone down this whole area on the outside. Although, I don't know if I want to run vignette on this, so let's just go without for now. Okay. So that's really about it. When it comes to camera calibration, um, you know, this is a different story. It's embedded. I don't have many choices, but if you haven't played with this before, uh, definitely take some time and mess around with this if you want. Um, this will also modify the, uh, the image as well. And I'm going to stop right here. Now, I want you to keep in mind that, I mean, I, I actually went a little slower just to go through some explanations. But um, there are a lot of things that you might be able to do to a night image that you can save as a preset. So when you save it as a preset, the next time you come across a night image, um, you can lay down that preset that you've already done, and then you can work from there, and it, it'll even go that much quicker. So let's take a look at the before. That's the before image. There's the after. Before. After. Let's go full screen on this. So there it is. Actually, this would make for an awesome uh, desktop background. I kind of like it. Um, so yeah, I think it looks good. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's much else I would do to this right here. So again, this was done with a JPEG, but if you did have RAW, it would only, it would only be that much better. Hopefully you enjoyed the Lightroom tutorial and you found it beneficial. And if you have some old JPEGs lying around, you're thinking, eh, you can't do a whole lot with them. Well, hopefully this will show you that you can. And if you have the opportunity to shoot RAW, uh, go ahead and do it. And take that RAW image into Lightroom, and you'll be able to get that much more from it. Because that RAW image captures so much more data. Now, as mentioned in the discussion of JPEG versus RAW, would I shoot RAW for it? everything I do? Eh, probably not. That's just my opinion. But for those scenes that you really want to have some fun with and really let your creativity go, go with RAW. But even if you don't, this example shows you that you can grab a JPEG and still have a lot of fun with it and still produce what I think is still a good quality image. Again, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, so I think it's okay. <laughs> but you guys may not, I don't know. Um, but in the end, just have some fun. That's what it's all about. So. Hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see some more of these tutorials, just let me know in the comments below. I'll do some other stuff in Lightroom. It's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of different techniques that you can use um, to try to make those images really pop. And so again, just let me know, and, and I'll create some more videos on it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. Uh, a lot of the videos I put out are typically about photography and technology, but you never know. I also put videos out on automotive maintenance and homeownership. You just never know what you're going to get. So, till the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.